Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today we're working on this pile of parts, which if you were to put it all back together would be an old double acting water pump. These are all the parts and pieces. The main body of it is over there. If you're at all familiar with these, you'll notice that this is a double acting pump. The cylinder is right in the middle and the piston would go in the middle of that cylinder and as it works back and forth it'll pump water with each travel up and down. Now what we're working on today are the piston seals. Here is the piston rod with some other stuff attached to it. The seals are gone. These are just the uh, steel discs that are remaining. There's this seal disc, a spacer, and then there's this other seal disc that would slide on there, and a nut that holds it all together. Now this seal disc and the other one, I guess these are more like seal support discs. The actual seal is leather. It's a cup-shaped piece of leather that's formed around this. and It's cup-shaped because when you have pressure on the inside of that cup, it's going to swell the cup out a little bit into the bore of the cylinder and allow it to create a good seal. So the original leather seals were just totally trash. Just bend them and they fall apart into little brittle pieces. So we need to make new ones. And it's not too challenging, but you can't just cut a piece of leather and stuff it in there because, again, you need to make it into a cup shape. You can't just use a flat piece of leather. So here's the piece of leather we're going to be working with. I originally tried using some leather belting, you know, power transmission belting that I had that I found laying around, but it was just too old and, and cracked, so I just bought some new stuff. This was only $15 on eBay for, I think, 10 or 11 ounce leather. Really nice, thick stuff. And it's a nice medium firmness, which I think will work out just fine. So I started out just by tracing the shape of the seal support disc, and then I found the center of that shape that I traced and then using a set of calipers I, uh, or a compass rather uh, I guess you could use a set of calipers too, you just set the jaw the right size doesn't really matter, use some sort of tool or eyeball it if you're good enough to set a line further out to accommodate for the, the edge of that seal that's going to turn up when you uh, form this and I also added just a little bit extra to accommodate for you know, misalignment or whatever and we can always trim it back but if you have too much it's it's gonna get all wrinkly when you try to form it so be conservative but give yourself a little bit extra so let's cut this out all right so here is the second part of my operation and uh, by the way if you hear incessant bird cheeping we have some residents nearby. We got two Americanas and two Amberlinks growing up getting ready to lay some eggs for us. But anyway, this is the form that I made to form the leather in. The bore of the, of the cylinder in the pump is two and a half inches. As, as it turned out, I had a two and a half inch hole saw. So I took a big chunk of wood, hole sawed down a suitable amount. I just kind of guessed I, I put the seal support in there and I figured I want it to be at least as deep as the seal support plus a little extra. So I went that deep and then I took a large drill bit and I just drilled a whole bunch of holes to the same depth and pried all the pieces out with a screwdriver and finished off with a chisel but I didn't even really have to it came out pretty well so there's my form and this is going to be the the other side of the form. This is the male and this is the female, I guess you could say. And I'm using my big Candidate Auto Camelback drill press as a shop press. You could probably even just use a you could use a bench vise or just some heavy weights or you know a shop press or whatever. But what we're going to do to form the leather, we're going to put this in hot water for a while to to soften it up. And the temperature of the water does make a difference. I tried boiling it for a little while and then forming it and it formed really easy but it was really hard and brittle afterwards so just really hot tap water for maybe 10 minutes or maybe a gently simmering water on the stove will soften it up just right and then once the leather is 
is softened up and pliable, you put it on over your form, put the other piece on, and then press down with the drill press. And then to make alignment easy, what I'm going to do before I have a, a piece of leather ready to press is I'm just going to center everything up perfectly the way I want it, center it with the, with the drill press, and then clamp the piece of wood down with a C-clamp. So all I have to do is drop the leather on there and look at the line, or the circle that I drew, center that up with a hole, and then bring this down, center that with the chuck of the drill press, and all I have to do is, is just push it in. And I'll push it in, maybe kind of, you might have to diddle with it a little bit, but the practice pieces I've done, it goes in pretty, pretty, pretty well. And then just leave it there overnight. Take it out the next day and you're ready to go. So I'm gonna go inside and soak this piece of leather for a little while. All right, so we're ready to go. See the last thing that, I, that I've done, I put the C-clamp right here, because I was a little concerned with the pressure of pushing this in that these thinner parts of the wood might split out. Uh, whether or not that's a real danger, I don't know, but there's no harm in putting that there. I got this, this was under hot, hot tap water, running tap water for about 10 minutes. So I centered the disc on the leather. And I'll just force that in. You can see how it's kind of buckling a little bit and I'm massaging it in place. That buckling would be even worse if you cut it too, too large. It's almost there. I'm going to open up the chuck a bit because it's going a little cockeyed. I'm going to try to press over a larger area. Go just about in. Yep, oh, perfect. Just take that nice and slow and easy, work it in. That's it. All right, so the weight of the, of the spindle and everything, and the lever of the drill press is keeping it in place, so I'm just going to leave it just like that overnight. Pull it out tomorrow and take a look at it. All right, here we are. Today is tomorrow. And it's all, all done and cured and dried out. See, it's discolored a bit, that black. I think that's just from the, uh, from the iron. So anyway, let's see if we can pry this out. Oh, if being the key word. There we go. See, it's got the nice cup shape to it. Gently, gently work this out. There we go. That seems like it should work pretty good. Huh, you can see, this is interesting, you can see the the leather looks all like scaly and crusty. That's because it actually picked up the form or the surface of the uh, this metal puck. I suppose if I wanted something a little bit nicer, I could have machined a nice smooth piece of metal. But you know, this is gonna be inside a pump. No one's gonna know the difference. 
So that seems pretty good. Now you can see it's still pliable, but it doesn't want to lose its shape. It's still cup shaped. And it came out of a two and a half inch hole, so I assume it's still about two and a half inches. Yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can see that. Two inches, five hundred and eight thousandths or so. I might just do a little trimming so like there's a little humpty dump there. Just use a razor knife to smooth smooth this edge out. And of course I have to punch a hole in the middle. And that's it. I, I am happy with how that came out. So that's all there is to it. Nice, nice little trick for you guys. If you need to form some leather, rebuild a pump or make some old school leather seals for a tractor or whatever else. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. hope this uh, helps out some of you guys and gals out there in engine land. If you enjoyed this, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and stay up to date with my projects. I know I haven't been making too many videos, but I got plenty of plenty of irons in the fire. And uh, I'll try to try to keep you up to date with what's going on. So thanks for watching everybody and stay tuned for more.